In order to start dealing with this idea of where we lay out all of our electronics and components and how the battery attaches, well, we kind of need to know where the battery is going to go. Frankly, that's actually more difficult than the rest of this. So let's start out with a simple layout. Uh, we've got our seat stay and our chain stay here. We've got a little mock-up of our derailleur. Kind of comes down like that. And so we have a few options, but frankly, none of them are actually really that good. So let's start out with one of my original ideas. And that's what if we make kind of a little backpack? I think that SRAM has figured out uh, the ideal, simple, ac accessible location for placing and removing a battery at the very back. Um, so basically you can have it kind of hook in and have a latch on one side or, or sliding kind of like V or B mount on professional cameras, something like that. But you have to have a way of, of mounting it there. And uh, the only easy way is if we build a little piece that goes between the derailleur and the mount. So a thin piece of aluminum or steel and it's bent or machined out. And that's kind of this area here that goes in around. And that's all well and good. Uh, it's probably my first go-to idea. It's simple, but when I looked at it, it's not exactly perfect. You actually have to rotate it up much more than you would expect. The next thing is, what if we just mounted this along the chain stick? Seems like a fairly good idea, but we have to keep everything really thin. So the battery's all in uh, a line here and uh, you know, they're there and then our electronics are there. Um, and then we have to get our wire out. And that's, that isn't bad, but it's not an ideal location. Like on the outside, it's more okay. But on the top, the bottom or the inside, you can have the chain come in or you can have something uh, run into it or crash or a chain derailment or any number of things. And, and you know, you have those batteries there and that's kind of risky. So another idea was to uh, use this area in here. And it has a lot of the same problems as on the, on the chain stay. You don't have much room. You're very near the chain. Uh, Organizing square batteries in this is, well, you can see it's not that easy. Uh, and if a chain derails or you're just taking it off, it can, the chain kind of runs through this area. So that, that's kind of a no-go, unfortunately, after I, after I gave it some thought. I, it was really a bit of a, a no-go. Kind of extending that idea about the seat stay. Well, you have this, and I thought about how you could place the batteries on the side or on the top. And um, this location here, that has the same problems as the kind of keeping it in the inner triangle. Um, it, it's just, you can't really go there without risks of, of damage. And it's actually better on uh, the seat stays. The seat stays tend to be a bit more out of the way if we can move that up just a little bit, it looks like a good solution. Um, we have these batteries that kind of, instead of being in line, they, they could mount off. Uh, but again, inside one, yeah, not so good. The seat stay better. But then I realized in looking at my bikes, none of those seat stays have consistent shape. Every single one is different from straight, sometimes they bend out, sometimes they have a curvature to them, sometimes they have weird inserts for damping, sometimes they, they just constantly change cross-section and shape. Um, it, it really unfortunately precludes that you, you can't mount there. I took off one of my uh, EPS derailleurs when cleaning my bike recently, and that's what I have here. And I thought about something interesting with regards to my first concept. So we, there's this aluminum piece on the back, uh, and that's the anti-rotation stopper. The rot I think it's the rotation stopper, something like that. That kind of gave rise to this idea. The idea of if I take that piece out and have a custom piece machined, then I can 
have my battery pack come out, shorten my cable and mount it there, and it, it all is still one self-contained unit. Unfortunately, there is a five-point security Torx here, so that's not great. Um, and the shape of this piece is, well, let's just say you're not cutting it on a three-axis CNC machine without refixture. But it does kind of play well with that original concept. The idea is that, oh, well, maybe I can do a, a, a small shim-like element that comes out and allows you to mount the electronics on the battery. And maybe I can do one where I uh, remove this rotation stop and replace it with a similar one with the same stops and allow this kind of backpack battery configuration. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on either one, but surprisingly, it's not going to matter as much as you would think. So let's start getting our circuit boards in there. And uh, we have our interface board. So that's just going to be something for electrical contacts or something to mount on, or, or actually could be hard gold electrical contacts on a PCB. Uh, we also have the Arctic Fox board, um, and that could be there too. So you can see how it, it was designed to be relatively thin and kind of fit the shape of these uh, quadcopter uh, batteries, or cells technically, but we'll be having three of them. Uh, and so we have to have these interface boards, but on the other design uh, here, this linear um, kind of like in, in a row, if it was to go onto the side of the chain stay, we're going to have to have a bit of a different arrangement. So if I enclose them in little housings, you can see how not much is sticking out. Um, we have our, our power uh, in and out here or here. That is kind of interesting. I mean, it's fairly simple. It doesn't actually matter. That board is pretty versatile because I intended it for this application. So how does that impact our, our circuit board design? Well, we actually only have a handful of components to deal with here. They are the SOC, uh, the regulator. We're going to want an accelerometer to wake it up and a uh, motor controller. And we'll probably have this little guy down here. He's a vet for uh, enabling and disabling the Hall effect. We know our two battery shapes. And the interesting thing about that is how we mount this is kind of important. So when we have our battery kind of in that SRAM style pack, we have our other circuit board here and we are going to have uh, power kind of running through it. Basically the power is coming in on this lower side and out of this side because we can run our cable back out like that. And it makes for a very simple design. So this layout that I've already shown, well, that basically has the right flow. It keeps all the power down near the motor controller. We just bypass it. We don't need big traces because um, the SOC is a tiny microcontroller consuming, you know, on average, less than a milliamp. Um, and the reg is just basically pulsing it a little tiny bit and has to drop it down. So there's inductors and stuff around there. But this design, well, you can see, where's our battery going to come out? Well, if I redraw that design, we know that we have our little enclosure and our long skinny battery. And so what we end up with is power going in one side. So that's how we'll get our power down to our motor. And that doesn't on inspection fit with this because, you know, if we are kind of a long and skinny like that, we have the wrong layout. We're trying to send power on one side and, and, and out the other. So we have to route it around it. Or do we? So if we were to run power kind of the same direction and keep it the same orientation, well, all we need now is some connectors that are on the sides instead of the back and the bottom for uh, this arrangement here. We just need, you know, these side ones for this arrangement. And so if we can keep it really, really compact, if we can keep that top distance really, really compact, I don't see why we couldn't use this setup for both and, and, and it just, this gets cut off there. Um, and now we have a design that, well, it can fit either standard. So 
Um, I think that's the ideal board layout. Uh, and we just have to have the provisions for multiple um, power input points. So I'm going to say one on the back and uh, one on the side and probably see if I can keep the side ones top bottom. Um, and then the bottom one um, straight down. So these two here, basically the same and this one on the back. Generally, I think that should work for most applications. Uh, this seems relatively promising. I need to go away and do some more investigation on things and start designing stuff, which is probably boring, but I might screen cap it and something and throw it up on an off week. One of the things that I really got to kind of learn, and I've done this before, is that I've gone back and I've been dissecting an old design. And, and if it had been, you know, future Keith talking to old Keith, old Keith would probably be feeling a bit embarrassed. But the reality of most of my designs are that just because certain things get better and better and better, they don't, it's not like that original one isn't capable of doing what I want. In fact, I could use that now directly. I just don't like smaller aspects. And being able to know that, ah, this could impact performance, uh, that takes experience and that takes, uh, you know, making a few mistakes. So I got to make those mistakes early on. And now I'm trying to rectify them by trying to, all right, I'm not just trying to make something that does this task of, of either, you know, making a, a derailleur system to uh, just work in a one X mode. So you don't have that front derailleur and those extra wires hanging off to work potentially wirelessly. Well, actually will work wirelessly, but also uh, I want to have a, a wired mode so that you can have a, uh, quicker shifts. I mean, that's one of the things that no matter what anyone tells you, there is latency in adding a wireless system. And yeah, so, you know, 20, 30, 40 milliseconds, maybe could be hundred milliseconds. Um, so you can get faster response with wired and no interference. So if you're in a Peloton situation, interference can be quite problematic, especially with uh, the more and more gadgets we keep putting on our bikes. I mean, there's, there's also no reason it couldn't be used in a 2X configuration. I'm just not really looking to solve the front derailleur situation. Um, I've actually had a couple of people asking uh, about that um, in regards to their own projects or in regards to this. And like, this can easily work for it. And it's probably going to be a couple of lines of code change because there's only kind of two positions and kind of a bit of a drifty position for adjusting based on the rear one. So you have some rear communication or to snoop on the rear communication. But that's not that hard. Uh, generally though, it's not been a priority. Uh, there is less, if, if we think that the rear derailleur is bad for potential areas for packaging, well, the front derailleur externally is, is worse. But you have a couple of benefits. You can shove it inside, but that's bad for wireless. Um, and anyone who tells you otherwise is a liar. And you could use the bottle cage bosses. Um, and I think uh, not a lot of people give credit for this, but uh, you know, this modern no wires thing, uh, it's really about aesthetics. And so those people who are concerned with aesthetics and wanting to go wireless and wanting to potentially utilize something like this, they're probably not gonna want um, bottle cage boss battery mount. But again, non-commercial, so who cares? Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about this whole process and uh, how I think the biggest takeaway is done is better than perfect. And with that, take care.